Hello again, guys and girls. This is Shai Danon from Israel, raising the frequency. And today I'm here with a special guest, and we are going to speak about magneto electroculture. It's sweeping the planet, if, if I may say so, at least the social networks. Uh, today I'm here with Matt Roski. And, uh, you know, a bit of details, a bit of bio about Matt. Matt Roski founded Cultivate Elevate to bring back information that has been suppressed and caused our society to become sicker and weaker. Our mission is to educate and empower individuals to rise above the state of fear because there are always solutions. You can find Matt uh, Roski website in the description. Stay with me. I'll bring Matt in a second. Here we go. Enjoy the show. Yes, Matt Roski. How are you doing, mate? Good, good, good. It's good to have you. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for uh, doing it. After a few times, we try to uh, fix a time and a day. Uh, it's Passover days here in Israel, and uh, people are more in the and you know with the families at home and eating and talking. And I hope they they talk some sense. Um, yes, but we are here to speak not about Passover, but about electro or magneto culture, and it is kind of sweeping the internet, wouldn't you say so? And thankfully, some of it, at least maybe the majority of it, is thanks to your videos. Or someone is obviously taking some of your material and making clips and short videos out of it, and it's being spread all over the internet. Um, are you good with that? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's been uh, it's been nuts. Our, uh, one of the last videos, someone took the clip that I talked about placing the antennas into the soil so that the pollinators would come back. And that clip already hit 755,000 views in the last 72 hours. So wow. it's been just going, it's going nuts. But it is the planting season, right? It is spring and we're going into the planting season too. But it's, yeah, I'm very thankful for all the information spreading and people clipping things and putting it out there so that people can see something different than what we've been told. You know, I, I watched some of your videos. I went to your website, which I put here on the on the description of the video. And, um, well, a few things. First of all, I noticed that we are kind of similar because unlike Yannick Van Doon, which I give a lot of credit to, and I interviewed him uh, three months ago, and he's kind of the pioneer of the revival of magneto-electroculture uh, at the moment. Uh, and I interviewed him, and it was amazing and really in-depth and uh, interesting interview somehow I kind of relate to you because you cross sections it's not just about agriculture it's not just about growing food it's really about opening our minds to real or true history and, and not the fake history that we we've, we've been fed with and to open our minds to the forces of creation, the real forces of creation, not Wi-Fi and, you know, 5G, 6G, 4G, what have you. And to see that we can actually, well, we are part of nature, a very important part of nature, and we can communicate and we should uh, practice again on communicating with nature. And part of how to uh, apply or to use these forces of creation in our life and with nature is using uh, conductive metals, uh, other like crystals, like other elements from, from Earth, uh, to use sounds, frequencies, colors. I mean, these are all make sense. And it's kind of putting together a lot of fractions that we learned of, whether you were therapy, aromatherapy, or color therapy, or it's putting them all together and applying them in our daily life. Now, I know, at least from watching your videos, your interviews, you're not a farmer. It's not like you have a field and you practice and experimenting with all these things on a larger scale. Neither am I. That's another point why still using our brain and using our heart and common sense and see the results that coming out in a, you know, in a little garden or in a big uh, field or in a small pot in your apartment, you see the results and it's mesmerizing and it's amazing and you want to do more of it. What 
if if one or when one would like to start to do something with electro or magneto culture what should one do so the easiest way to start with anything related to electro culture is just taking a simple piece of wood and then wrapping that piece with copper so that the copper creates a coil and they would point the coil up towards the air and then the other part of the the, the coil or the piece of copper would just go down into the soil mm-hmm. and they can place that into their garden if it's indoor if it's outdoor if it's in their basement anywhere that's what I've started to learn with all of this stuff I had a friend who sent me a message that they were growing potatoes and they took just a piece of wood and copper stuck it in the potato pot and it was in the basement and now the potatoes are as tall as the ceiling and he actually had to get a stick <laughs> to hold up the potatoes because they're so big now and he's like I don't know what to do because this was just supposed to be an experiment right he was wow. like I'm just testing it out and now I got an ample amount of potatoes but it's it's very very simple because what you're doing is you're just increasing the conductivity of of the plant right the sap the blood of the plant just like us as humans our blood flows and when blood does not flow our body falls apart so same thing with these plants if the plant cannot conduct and move its sap up and down the roots then the plants begin to fall apart and with and, and, and by the way our blood is highly magnetic <laughs> yes. Just to, yes 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 so you're combining these materials like we were talking about with the copper with your with your, your plants and you're helping that flow occur because every time we look at for example when the full moon comes out the sap is at the perfect balance so what you're doing is you're just helping to boost that sap so that things can flow and then also nutrients can flow right because a lot of plants what's happening is we see a lot of these trees nowadays where one side is pretty much you know kind of looks like it's cooked it's not alive anymore and then the other side of the tree is all alive and And what's happened is is the conductivity of this side has pretty much turned off there's nothing flowing to it so it starts to kind of retreat and then this side is all a life life force you know all the beautiful energy and when we start using electric culture we can bring both sides back to life and that was another discovery I had learning plants coming back to life that have been dormant or hibernating for up to six months to a couple years and And all of a sudden spout sprouting leaves again and that was another very mind-blowing situation it's, it's funny you say it because uh, a month and a half ago roughly I cut some uh, vine branches to plant them and to regrow them all right from from plants I have uh, in another place and all of them came out but the thicker stem didn't move nothing. You know, and that's the thick and I was thinking this will be a great vine. It will become a really thick, good vine. Nothing, no buds, no movement, nothing. And I start and I put copper in all of them. and I gave this one two, <laughs> two coppers just to give it a boost. This morning, I had a look, and he has two buds coming out from the from the stem. So I, I can't tell maybe without the copper it would also do that but I'm really happy that I put the copper because now it's it's there now I notice you have um, this on your uh, fingers and your wrist and w- why why so you know when we look back into like George Lakovsky's work and the Lakovsky coil they yes. used to wrap people in copper back in the day when they had for example inflammation or pain and And I wrap for example my right side right because this is our energetic side if you're a right-handed person usually your right side is the energetic side and your left hand is the grounding side so I don't really put a lot on my left side because this is the grounding side it's the the negative frequency so I'll put for example a little copper around the rings these are all meridian lines mm-hmm. so as you as you go down the palms of the hands you have meridian lines and what they used to do was they would wrap certain meridian lines and To increase the blood flow or the energy of that meridian line this is why when they do acupuncture for example and they stick the needles into all the different spots those are all meridian lines with which work on the electric principle of the body so same thing with wrapping copper around certain fingers depending on you know depending on how you feel you might wrap it around your ring finger you know these these things change because as the day goes on right as we move into noon and then the day goes on you Different parts of the body require different electrical conductivity 
Mm -hmm. And you can look into, it's just beautiful work that George Lakofsky used to do with all his, but he was getting rid of people's inflammation and arthritis just by copper coils. That was it. He didn't you know, it's it. funny, I, you know. I, I remember my dad in the 80s, he used to have this copper uh, um, bracelet around his wrist, and this is in the 80s, you know, and we like kind of forgot about it. But it's again, it's making a revival, but it's much larger, bigger revival because it's to do with hidden secrets of existence, of reality, of creation, uh, hidden history, hidden geology, hidden agriculture, hidden many things of hidden, you know, health or remedies. Um, would you mind, or from your maybe from your own personal? view or from your own, your own personal process, how you came to know these things? What have awoken you? I mean, did you suffer? Some people waking up because of a disease they have or because of a crisis. I mean, I know for me it wasn't like that, but for you, how you kind of wake up to all these knowledge, bits of knowledge and information that you put out, which I think it's highly valuable, and the fact that you connect all these subjects that's what draw me to speak with you because it's connecting the dots. It's so important nowadays and having discernment as to what is false and what is true. And I find that the way you speak and the way you connect the dots and the subjects, this is really valuable. So can you take your time, please share with us your personal experience and how you came to know all these things and to speak about these things and to be really enthusiastic about these things because this is what push people to know more about this is the enthusiasm and the passion that the guy has. So I, I would really like to hear your personal uh, process, if, if, if you don't mind. So if we go with the longer story, because it's a yes. little longer. Yes, than yes, go story. ahead. It was, you know, I used to be in the fitness world and I was heavily in the fitness world and I watched people do crazy feats of strength of squatting, say, 1,000 pounds or 500 kilos, deadlifting, you know, 500 kilos. I've seen pretty much almost everything you can think of. But there was an energy principle to the gym that I had, right? There was an energy principle that connected all of us and synced us all up. And I didn't understand the energy principle when I was at that time of my life, right? I didn't understand everything of related to energy. But during that time also, too, my health took a toll. And it was because I was just eating, eating, eating. And I didn't understand the food that I was eating, right? I didn't understand the energetic principles of the food. And I started developing health issues. I started having skin issues. I started having all these things related to the food in which I was consuming because a lot of GMOs and poisons and toxins and these things. So when I started understanding all of the GMOs and all of these toxins and everything, I started cleaning up my diet. And I watched this documentary called GMOs Revealed. And it was a 22 hour documentary, which just blew my mind on how the food is being used as a weapon, right? It's not the same food that we used to eat back in the day, you know, 1930s, 1920s, whatever else. So I started cleaning up my diet, going all organic. My health started going up and, but I never connected the dots between the food and the energy. And then later into time, about 2019, just before all the nonsense began in 2020, I had an Akashic read reading done and this Akashic reading pretty much kind of blew my mind. And I just, I called this lady, we, we talked on the phone. She told me my whole life. She told me everything about my life, everything that I never knew. She so told me about stuff in the past. She told me about stuff in my childhood. We're on the phone. So I was blown away that she's telling me all this information over the <laughs> telephone. And at the time she was in Ireland and I was in Chicago, right? So we're not even next to each other. And she's just blowing my mind. So she said, at the end of this, she said, what I want you to do is go look at crop circles. And I said, crop circles? I'm like, what, what am I going to do with that? You know? <laughs> and she goes, just, you just go look at them. You'll figure it out. You'll just, she goes, you'll just understand them. You'll understand what it says. And I was like, okay, because I guess I was so, so sure. So I started for about a month and two, just looking at crop circles. And I was like, you know, they kind of look like, cymatics or sound or they kind of look like maybe the star alignments or the moon right or the sun and these things or like maybe there's depending on if there's like you know solar flares going on it kind of looks like that and as i started to get into that it led me down to all these different books right i started understanding about pyramid energy 
and how all the everywhere in which pyramids are, there's the highest amount of energy because of the ley lines that are underneath. And as I started understanding that, I started thinking, well, we should use this energy to heal, right? And so it kind of led down to another book, uh, a pyramid energy book by Mary Hardy, which was a really interesting book that really kind of, you know, showed me some different things. It talked about how people would wear pyramids on top of their heads or dunce caps in order to maintain focus and attention span because it spins the cells back the opposite direction so that they can focus. So this book kind of opened my eyes. And then as I was getting into the work of the pyramid energy, I started getting into a lot of Victor Schauberger's work because I started researching water and how water flows and all of these things and, and his bio plow and all the tools and all the copper tools and how he explained how when people were using copper tools, they would yield more food than when they used iron tools, they would actually not yield as much and the soil would get all clumpy and, and require more water. And it dawned on me the day that I read that part of, by Victor Schauberger, I thought everybody needs to know this, right? Like we face all this food nonsense, food, food scarcity, right? Yeah. It's all food scarcity. You know, we face all these things, but in reality, we, we could have abundance. And this was shown in the 1940s, 1930s, 1940s with Victor Schauberger's work. So it's not even that far away. This is just recent, right? We had abundance only, you know, 60, 70 years ago, right? So when I got into that and started researching Victor Schauberger, then I researched George Lakovsky, then I researched Justin Cristo Flo, then I researched Wilhelm Reich, you know, then I started researching just um, color therapy, color healing, how colors can do different frequencies and all these things, just everything. And it all made sense when I started connecting the dots. Also, when I read the book, The Invisible Rainbow, right? Mm -hmm. We have one frequency which is being emitted, which is toxic and harming our plants and our life force. And then we have this beautiful electroculture frequency where we're harnessing all the beautiful atmospheric energy all over us. And we can use that to heal ourselves, our plants, our, our soil, everything. And I realized this needs to be put out there. So I started making, first it started with just one video and it was just a piece of wood <laughs> stuck with some copper and shoved it in the soil. And it got a million views and it just kind of went nuts from there. And as I started realizing, well, let's see what this can be done on a grand scale, right? If every person just applies this, let's see what can happen. And it's turned into that. But each book has led me to a different amount of information. And then I would tie those things together. I would take notes, right? I'd put them in my notebook and I tie these things together to understand, okay, it's not only the conductivity of the copper, it's the color spectrum of the copper, right? Because when we look at copper, for example, it's the same color as the sun. It gives you those beautiful red hues. So it started to make me realize that when we look at a lot of ancient buildings, a lot of sacred buildings, a lot of temples, a lot of mosques, a lot of churches, all the old Shabil, what do they use? A lot of these materials, a lot of different colors, a lot of different different types of granites and stones and crystals and quartz. Why are they using all that? Why do they have these antennas on top, or for the most part, usually, up on top of the buildings? They're gathering that energy too. So it started, just all these things started connecting the dots. And then as I started to get into the, the, the history in which we haven't been told, right? Not the traditional, you know, horse and wagon. <laughs> We're all on horse and wagon nonsense. But the beautiful history where people understood energy and understood the energetic principles of wearing jewelry and wearing all these crystals and gems. And even like, for example, getting into like lapis lazuli, right? Lapis used to be used in almost everything. People used to wear lapis on their on their, on their their chest as well, you know, because they understood that the, the, the electrical frequency that comes from the cop, the combination of copper, iron, and um, the, the pyrite that's in lapis. And it also is the same as eyes, as our color of our eyes. Mm -hmm. So as I got into all these things, I started connecting the dots and then realizing, well, let's just use this to help boost our soil, right? Because we're all facing problems with the food and whatever. But in reality, we could be doing this in such a beautiful, harmonious way to actually take care of the earth rather than dousing it with chemicals and then expecting to eat healthy food, right? And so it's been a passion of mine because I had a lot of health problems. I had family members with health problems, 
right? And we can never address the root cause because all of the professionals in which I went to would always tell me it's genetic, it's just this, you know, oh, you're getting older. No, it's the, our, our, our terrain is being manipulated. Yes. And I thought if I can provide some sort of solutions on each aspect, whether it's the clothes that you wear, whether it's the garden that you're, you're growing, whether it's your lights, whether it's the Wi-Fi, right, getting rid of Wi-Fi and all these beautiful things, oh. then we can elevate our terrain and then also elevate our world and then also create a resistance that's on the ground roots level, right? Because it, we're taking back our power. We're healthy. Once we're healthy, in my opinion, we're unstoppable. So that's kind of the whole, the whole story on how it all began and everything else. Also, when you, I mean, when you have the freedom to grow your food and it's organic and it's with, you know, no pesticides, herbicides and, and these other stuff, um, you almost untouchable. I mean, you keep your health through your food and the environment, the terrain, and then no one can do anything to you. I mean, you have your food and your water. That's it. Now, obviously, so much poisons um, have been thrown at us on each level through every field of, you know, whether it's even media, education, pop music, what have you, food, water, Um, obviously the radiation, the LED lights, so much um, way, so many ways to poison us or to try and diminish our capabilities. And what you're describing is really upgrading our capacity of capabilities. I mean, I'm saying it in a weird way because it's not upgrading our capabilities because they are still there. They are dormant or they've been hurt or suppressed by all these poisons and brainwash and manipulation and propaganda. But this is upgrading our understanding or us accepting that we have these capabilities to take control of our own life and to determine what food we like to eat, what water we like to drink, and how we want our life. ambience or, or environment to look like or to feel like using really simple things. I mean, like you say in one of your videos, one dollar or half a dollar or 25 cents, I don't know, you have a piece of copper yeah. and you can grow your tomatoes much bigger, faster, larger, you know, and it, you can put it on your finger and you can help yourself. Simple things that... That actually, because they are connected to this e- eternal source of wisdom, immediately it helps you to connect to this source just by using this uh, instrument or this piece of metal or this piece of crystal or what have you. Now, I've been working also with, um, for many years with, uh, with crystals, with crystal balls mostly, so producing sounds with uh, quartz crystals. And I've been giving a lot of uh, workshops to people how to... Uh, work with them and how to tune them and how to relate to them etc so again what you're describing now and elsewhere is for me is just a, a natural continuation of of what I do in the last seven eight years or so I've been interviewing a lot of doctors and professionals about mitochondria I've been changing my light environment my electromagnetic environment and my water environment uh, In the body and also outside the body so this is again a natural continuation of what I've been doing anyway and now I apply it to my plants <laughs> now I apply it to where I uh, where I stand where I walk where I grow my food uh, to my chicken <laughs> you know I have chicken outside I have cats I sell also these uh, copper cups that you were just drinking from and copper mugs and And copper jugs and so people need to wake up to this simple really simple stuff that can go really long distance in improving our life another question I have I mean you're saying it's simple for someone to take a piece of copper a piece of food to wrap it like you know in a spiraling way one piece in the soil one piece towards the sky and And there's also these antennas to harness atmospheric electricity, etc. But if someone 
like someone wants to take it to the next level. He wants to grow like now, like four, I don't know, one, eight, no, acre is too much, but <laughs> half an acre, okay, of, of vegetables. He already is doing agriculture. He's already in it. He's using good fertilizers and good stuff, and he doesn't spray, and he works biologically, you know, very well. He wants to take it to the next level. What should he do? So there's a couple things that I can think of. And if this is on the grand scale, you would need a larger antenna that's over six feet tall or, um, you know, two meters, right? You'd want over, you'd want that because the fact is, is the higher you go up, the more atmospheric energy you can pull, right? right. So if you're also, also the, sorry, also the, the, the cover is larger, right? I mean, the, the upper you go, the cover of the antenna is larger. Yes. So usually what will happen is someone will make a, like a larger antenna that's straight up. And then it'll flail out, kind of like the old TV antennas we used to have. Right. Back then. You know, then you would sit there and put your hands on there and whatever else. But you can basically make it kind of like a T and kind of going up. And then you can make a larger scale antenna to cover a larger area. And then that person can, can usually run copper wiring through the soil to the rest of the area in which they're trying to cover. And right. that I've seen work really well. I have a buddy right now. He already got radishes in three weeks. Right. So like really fast and they're pretty, pretty large, um, but that will cover a large area. The other thing they can look into is they can look into basalt, which is the paramagnetic, beautiful volcanic clay. Mm -hmm. That clay has lots of quartz in it. And what happens is, is when quartz is squeezed, it creates a piezoelectric yes. an energy. So, for example, this is the bloodstone and this is crypto quartz. It's a really cool stone. It increases circulation. But when it's squeezed like that, it creates that uh, energy and that electricity. So if you place basalt onto your soil, what you're doing is, is increasing that conductivity of the soil. And that will help your plants grow faster. It also make them more resistant to things. And the next one they can move into is looking into doing bird sounds. There was a great book by Dorothy Redelak uh, called The Sounds of Music and Plants. And she showed how when plants are exposed to beautiful classical music, 430 432 hertz, chanting, all these beautiful things that are coming from, you know, either our mouths or our speaker system or bird sounds, that what happens is the plant opens up all the, the stomata, right? And then it will start to absorb everything that it's being placed onto it. That's where the rooster came from. The rooster chirps at 4 a.m. to open up all the plants to absorb everything that's going on. But bird sounds can be very beneficial. And this has been shown with so many people there was the Sonic Bloom by Dan Carlson where he had a speaker box and he played bird sounds and sprayed all his plants with wine and their plants just pretty much went crazy. And he traveled the world trying to show this. But at that time and then during the 1970s, people thought he was just, you know, losing it and it's not a smart idea. But bird sounds can be very beneficial. And that's why they do a lot with the frequencies to get rid of the birds, right? But what I've noticed is, and I've had lots of messages, and even my place as well, is I have every bird you can possibly think of come to my garden and or to my balcony and to my little home, right? Like every single bird. And it starts to bring back all the pollinators and all the birds and all these things using electroculture. So bird sounds can be very beneficial. And they have little like tinker bird yeah. sounds devices that you can buy as well too those are those were from the 1900s and they were made from brass back in the day as well too which why were they made from certain materials because they knew <laughs> but uh so you have the bird sounds and then the next level of upgrading your your gardens you can have color therapy right so you can use different types of hues and shades of colors to help boost your plant growth so some people can use like a blue you can almost get like a blue plastic or like a green plastic or green glass blue glass, whatever it may be, you can put that in front of your plant and then that will give the blue spectrum or a green spectrum or a red spectrum. And you can experiment with these colors and these different crystals or glass and they will emit certain color spectrums and that can help boost plant growth as well. And then the last one, not but you know, of all, is what you place your water in, right? So if you're watering your, your, your plants, you wanna make sure that you're watering with a copper or a brass, uh, gardening, uh, gardening pan, right. Or mm -hmm. watering can. And you want to make sure that it has a little curvature on the spout so that it can vortex the water before it releases. The problem with all of our water currently is that we have plastic and rubber hoses 
which deaden the water upon it even being released onto the plants. And then that destructures the water and destructures the life of the plant so that you don't grow as much food. So back in the day, they used to have copper watering cans. They used to have brass watering cans. And you can use those types of watering cans to help increase your plant growth because you're providing your water or you're providing your plants with electrically conductive water, right? If the water is not electrically conductive and you're not bringing these beautiful, the copper and everything into it, then what happens is it begins to be, it, it loses its hydrogen and its structure and its, its molecular structure. And then you're just pouring kind of dead water on there. And a lot of the tap waters or public waters, they put chlorine in there and that chlorine just decimates your plant. So if we notice all of these trends, all of these trends, even the pesticides that they sell at the hardware stores and all of these things, all of these things are diminishing the life force of your plants or your garden. So you are always dependent on the grocery store. Hmm. And that's what we're trying to do is break that cycle with these different techniques. And as I talk about these techniques, more additional techniques will come about because everybody is experimenting as we speak with all different types of techniques. I have a buddy doing things with frequencies and his plants are just going nuts. So there's so much we can be doing on a natural, holistic way or a, a do, using nature and, and all this beautiful energy instead of all this toxic stuff that just leads to poisonous food and then leads to poisonous bodies. <laughs> Absolutely. A um, few things, just to add most, I, I'm saying most because I don't know all, but most of structured water devices have copper in them. And obviously there's a reason why. Yeah. The second thing, which I think is the, maybe the most important thing in this talk, is that this talk is meant for you guys out there to try it out. I mean, not just to hear another video and to hear Matt speaking about magneto-electroculture, that's not what we're doing it. We're doing it to bring power back to our hands. And whether you have a basil plant or onion or what have you, put some copper in it. See what happens. I mean, try it out because th there's a feedback loop. Okay, once you do something and you see it's good, you feel good about it, you multiply it. And the energy invested is nothing compared to what you get because this is creation and it's about prosperity and thriving. So try it out that's that's why we do this talk for well, um, on that yes. topic and not to cut you off but the other thing i've seen too is with animals right they understand this they start for example if you have cats or dogs or chickens right they will sit next to the antenna and i had a friend who was up in washington and her quails are laying eggs even faster right the whole wow. the egg shortage everybody was facing they got tons of eggs. They have actually now too many eggs. So that's the other part. The animals can pick up on these things. And we're harmonizing that area for their health as well, too, because even the squirrels and the gophers and all the other little animals that are all around there, they need beautiful energy, too. Otherwise, they don't have a place to go. And I feel like we're, we're boosting that as a whole. And these animals start picking up on it. And they start coming around. But Cats, dogs, chickens will sit by the antennas. That's interesting because, um, you see, I don't have a rooster at the moment. So it's just the uh, hens or the, the female chicken. And I bought some eggs from a friend, which are uh, fertilized. No, how you say? Anyway, she has a rooster. So I bought like 20 or 30 eggs and I put them under the chicken who sit and they uh, sit on the eggs. But it's not on the soil, it's not on the ground, it's above the ground, it's like one meter above. So what, shall I just put a piece of copper there where they sit? I mean, without connecting it to the soil? What they did was they just made a big antenna, like a six foot antenna, and just mm -hmm. placed it next to the chicken coop. Right, I'll right do that. There. And then that just, that's their perfect <laughs> little antenna that's helping to support. I'll do that, I'll do that, thanks. Habits. So yeah. Excellent, I, I'm going to do that. Maybe I will have like dragon eggs, you know, like, whoa. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? Um, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, maybe one last thing about magnetoculture or electroculture or agriculture using conductivity, high conductivity materials or something like that. Um, some people, you know, the 
the old schoolers, but it's not the old schoolers, it's the new schoolers, those who use the Rockefeller stuff, the chemistry, the, the poisonous stuff, they laugh about these things, obviously. They are the, our parents and our grandparents, they laugh about these methods and say, yeah, it's been used, it's nonsense, it doesn't help, blah, 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 blah. So I divide this question into two. First, where it all started, I mean, where it comes from, this technology, this ancient technology, where it comes from, this is one thing. And the second thing is how to deal with the farmers or with our, you know, the fathers and grandpa grandparents' generation who think this is all just new age uh, bullshit, you know, how, how to deal with that, putting out the proper facts or evidences that this comes from a sp specific time in history and here are the evidences and let's try it out. I mean, how to deal with this? So there's two principles I can say. The first one is whenever, whenever a person passes out, what do they usually use to bring them back to life? They shock them to bring them back to life, right? That's the energy that they're providing back to this heart, which is all conductive, right? To bring them back to life. So every, energy is everywhere. And when we don't have energy, our body falls apart. Same with our plants, right? If they don't have energy, their, their plants fall apart as well too. But when we take it a step further and we go back into history and we look at some of the sacred buildings, right? They always usually had an antenna or lightning rod up on top and they had a piece of copper that was ran down into the garden, which was next door to the sacred building, mm -hmm. right? So you look at those buildings and go, well, they were obviously doing electroculture in the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, you know, 1600s. And we go into all these timelines and go, well, they understood it because look at every sacred building and look at the garden that is next to it. It is always just absolutely beautiful. It's in all different types of shapes, all different types of colors, right? All different types of sacred geometry that is used, right? Because they understood the energetic principles. So if all of this was woo woo, you know, fakeness, science, whatever else, then why have all of these places used it, right? We really look at that. I, that's kind of been my thing. I've looked at all these ancient buildings and all these places and their gardens are just nuts, you know, and it's even next to pyramids. The Russians have shown that when they put out pyramids mm -hmm. all over in different sacred spots, that plants that were extinct for up to 50 years or so started coming back to life, right? So if it didn't work, so to say, then why are plants coming back to life that have not been existent for over 50 years? That's the magic of all of this energy. And I, I've realized we can change our terrain overnight, right? It's very, very fast. Even with all the nonsense that we face all the time, right? I, like you said, all the different poisons and toxins and whatever, we can harmonize things overnight. It's just up to us. And I realize that the earth is a lot stronger than the technology in which we use. Because remember, this technology in which we're using like Wi-Fi and all these things, that came after the earth. The earth has already been here. It's already been creating energy the whole entire time. So, you know, for me, when I look at all of these things, and even to like you were saying, to moving it into farmers and people to try it, right? Just try it out. If you, you know, get, a, for example, a copper pipe, take it and tie it to your tractor, and as you say, plow your field or whatever it may be, just drag that copper pipe through the area in which you're plowing and see what happens. If you get more food or your plants grow faster, then there's you got nothing to lose. And that's what I've started to realize with this. We can't keep a closed mind, right? Mm -hmm. We kept a closed mind in 2020 and they took advantage of the whole world, right? Everybody was taken advantage of with that. And that was because we were just saying, well, you know, they're... They're correct. We should agree, right? That's what they want. And with this, with electroculture and this movement is what we're doing is we're having an open mind. I had a 10 year old um, send me a video the other day of how he got some plants from the subway and he took them home and they weren't doing that well. And he did electroculture and he brought them back to life and he's 10 years old. So the thing is, is what I've realized is we just have to keep an open mind in what we've been taught. Because as you said, the entire schooling system, the agriculture system, all everything has all been bought out by the Rockefellers in 1910, right? Mm -hmm. They took over every industry. They created the industry so that they have exactly. dependence on these things, right? They want us dependent on chemicals 
and genes and GMOs and all this other weird stuff. That's not natural. It does not agree with nature, right? So for all the people who, you know, I don't know, just don't kind of see it or don't want to, try it out. That's the best way to describe it. Try it for yourself. It doesn't cost much too, right? It's not expensive. Like you said, you could go to the hardware store, get some copper, wrap it around like if you have a, a, a your knee, at your, let's say your knee, you have knee pain, wrap some copper around that. I guarantee within about a month, you won't have the knee pain anymore. That's the magic of what we haven't been told because it keeps us dependent on all these broken systems all the time but we have to just have an open mind to try something new because these broken systems led us into the same predicaments that we all faced in 2020. Yeah. And you know, you speak and I remember uh, even one of the videos you spoke about Chicago and the architecture of Chicago <laughs> back in the 19th century. And, and funny because Israel was established, there's no like nice architecture in Israel in the last 75 years, it's all just squares and blocks and blah, blah. But when you look at the ancient architecture of Israel, obviously you see some nice buildings, but you see them also in Europe. And uh, even not so much in the States because it's it's relatively a, a young place, you know, I mean, the States, not America, but the, the United States of America is relatively a young place. But even there, you still see some really nice architecture coming from the Europeans, really, from, from different uh, cultures. Um, and the difference between the proper <laughs> architecture that goes along with creation with nature with sacred geometry and with the materials the conductive materials the and compared to the these blocks yes. of bricks that you know with cement and all this you know i've been i've been watching some uh, some uh, documentaries about building and constructions not just architecture but the materials and how the bricks were made and from what material and how it came faster but it became faster the, the preparing of the bricks but the material got was different i mean no more red bricks with copper in them with conductivity no more conductive material just cement and some clay and some you know and faster and better and stronger but it's not better and stronger it's just faster and they cover even some of the old architecture, they cover just with plaster showing as if it's a new architecture, but it's not. If you scrape the new architecture, you get to the ancient architecture and this is like, hang on. So someone put energy in covering up this ancient architecture and then one may think if he has a free mind, why? What for? It's a, it seems like a lot of energy, a lot of length to go to cover something. You can even ruin it and not, you know, cover it. But they cover it, and that's how they walk patches, hiding, hiding truths and proper history of us. Doesn't matter where you come from, yeah. hiding it and creating sort of okay, uh, new reality or new paradigm or, or new narrative for our life. And we see it more so since 2020. Uh, all, those of us who know it from before, they know it, but many people start to see this since 2020. Um, I would like to go to the next maybe uh, phase of magnetism. Maybe it's the first one really, because it is a water planet. Um, let's talk about water. I mean, that's water is my favorite stuff, just so you know. <laughs> water is the main thing. I've been talking with plants and leaves uh, uh, when I lived in India in the jungles. And I knew back then when I learned that this is due to water and due to the fact that I'm 80% water, 90% in the brain. Most plants are 92, 95% water. All animals are like 85, 90% water. In the air, there's like on a dry day, there's like 30% water. Um, it seems like water is really the conductive substance here. What is water? Where it comes from? What do you know about it? And by the way, I have... I have this book here for, you're going to mention it in a second, probably. So I have it, but yes, please, please go ahead. 
ignore so, me now. <laughs> with the water thing, that also relates to the old architecture. A lot of those old architectural buildings had water underneath or mercury. Mercury was another one, which is liquid, right? It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a liquid metal. That's, metal, yes. Yeah, it's alive and conductive, right? So that's another thing. But yeah, all those old world buildings, like you said, why were they covering them all up, right? Why were they getting rid of them and removing this and trying to cover it all up? Uh, if, if Unless you're trying to tell us a different story, right? And like you said, I think when we look at architecture, and I'm just going to hit on that one last time, but yes, when we look at the architecture, that was all over the world. Right. All the same architecture was all over the world. And in my eyes, what it made me realize when I got into the, the, the old world buildings and all these old school buildings that we just don't see anymore. They're not built. Right. They tell us it's too difficult, but it's, they just don't know how to build them. That's what it is. But when we look at those old world buildings, we see that people were very united. Right. It, it, it removes the division in which we all face where maybe one person is here, one person's here. But maybe we were really unified and connected mm -hmm. together. And that's what made me realize when I started getting into old world history, all the same buildings, the same designs are built all over the planet, mm -hmm. which would mean it's almost like everybody knew at that time, which would have meant they were very connected. They weren't divisive, right? So the, that's knowledge. the knowledge was spread around more or less evenly between all yeah. nations or continents. I, I, agree. I agree. There's something unifying back then. I agree. Totally agree. Yes. So that, that creates that. But with the water situation, we have been lied to on so many levels related to water, right? We're always told how we're running out of water and there's no water coming out of the sky and the surface water is running low. But in reality, there's water coming up from inside the earth all the time. It's always being created. It's the combination of hydrogen and oxygen mixing together at a pressurized system to come up from inside the earth, right? You look at all these different springs and volcanoes and waterfalls. They don't ever run dry. They're always pumping out water. So we've been tricked. And there's two great, two great things like you held up that book, New Water for a Thirsty World, which is a great book on this topic. And then the primarywaterinstitute.org is a great website where people can go and look up more on this topic specifically. But they try to trick us into we're running out of water so that we're also not connected to it, right? Because water is conscious. Anything that you place water into, water will take on that property. Same with our bodies. Since we are water, whatever we are wearing, such as the clothing materials, when we wear, for example, linen and wool, but not together, obviously, but linen and wool, those enhance the water in our body and cause our body to begin to heal faster, right? Because it, it works with water. So when we get into water, it's just this beautiful, conscious, living substance, right? There's Dr. Emoto and all of his work showing that when you say love to water, it, 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 it crystallizes in a perfect snowflake versus if you say bad words, you know, to your water before you go and drink it, or if you have bad thoughts, your water will take on that property. The water can actually poison you if you think about it, because it will destructure before you even consume it, similar to plants and how plants can also read your mind. But with water, it's this thing of what we've been tricked on. We, 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 we build in straight lines, right? And this is what Victor Schauberger showed as well. We build everything in completely straight lines and water does not flow in a straight line. It doesn't make any sense. It flows like, like a, kind of like a snake, you know, it, mm -hmm. it curves. And that curvature that it's creating is keeping the structure intact to a point where if you take water and you force it through a curvature that spins like this, it will actually start to levitate. And it's because it's creating a vortex in that water and will begin to levitate. And this was shown with fish. That's how they go up the streams. They levitate up the stream because they create vortexes in the water. But water is just this beautiful, magical thing. And when we start to structure our water, so back in the day, what they would do is they would take, for example, a silver or copper spoon and they would place it into their water and they would stir eight times to the right, stir eight times to the left. And they would sing to that water or say a prayer or a chant or whatever it may be at that time. And that would help to structure the water or before they ate food, they would say beautiful words before they ate the food. So it would help structure that the food that they're about to consume. But everything has structure. And when we remove the structure using all this weird frequencies and all this other stuff and then building in straight lines, now we have this destructured water, which does not work in our favor. 
And as we consume destructured water, we lose the hydrogen out of our body. And then we suffer from dehydration. You can keep drinking all the water you want, but you're not getting the hydration. This is why people used to go out into the sea and they would sit in the salt, right? Because there's electrically conductive water in the sea so that they would begin to heal, right? Everybody would take a trip and they would all go sit out in the salt water and their body would begin to heal. And that's the magic of water, but we are taught to be disconnected from it, right? It's We're, we're trying to build all these dams, which make absolutely no sense to block up everything so that there's water wars, right? That's the whole point of all of that. So everybody can argue over something that's unlimited and free. And we're building all these things. And also because water is a conductive material, which can make free energy. When we look at all those old world buildings, they used a lot of water devices, right? Mm -hmm. To gather that free energy, they use steam and all these beautiful things. And it's all been disconnected from us on purpose to make us dependent on the current systems that we have. But when I got into learning about water and understanding everything about structure and all this beautiful stuff, it made me realize that we've been just so disconnected that we put it in a bottle and just expect it to be just water. And it's like, it's much more than that. And if we take it a step further, you have all the holy waters, right? That are, as everybody is always talking about, reason being is because they're usually in brass, right? They're usually in a brass vessel, the holy water. And that brass has copper and zinc, which creates a battery. And then they place that in that and they have all of that energy from that. And they're like, the, the water is amazing. And it's like, yes, because they understood the energetic principles. If we enhance those, that water can be more healing for the body rather than destructive. You know, I, I lived in India for many years. I studied um, Indian classical music there and um, mostly in the jungle, but not just. <laughs> and uh, I noticed obviously that um, maybe not so much in the cities, but in the villages and the, the outskirts of the cities, people are still using uh, copper and brass um, vessels for water. <laughs> And some use it also for food, but this is more like for, uh, you know, it's, it, it looks nice because you're not supposed to put like really hot stuff in copper, uh, but still they sell dishes with it. And uh, so they use uh, copper and brass and clay. Yes. Um, and obviously there's benefits to each and every material here. We, it's okay if we won't talk about it. I'm just saying that you can find this also the Americans like the, the Indians. You can find it also in uh, Russia, the ancient Russia, in the forests and in the, again in the villages. It's the same knowledge, like we said before with the architecture and also with the agriculture. It's the same knowledge that goes all over the continents and all over the nations. Some it's in Russian, some it's in Hindi or Sanskrit, some it's in Hebrew, some it's other languages, but it doesn't matter. It's seen. I mean, the knowledge is seen through the architecture, through the water vessels, through the agriculture, through the shapes of the villages, the structures, etc. And this is really beautiful to see because once you start to see this unifying knowledge, you start to feel connected or more so than before, especially in this period when they try to divide and conquer us. So we need, again, it's another reason why it's important to have these sort of talks or conversations or interviews to remind ourselves who we are and what is really important here. And life is important and thriving is important and creation is important and the forces to use with the natural forces of creation. This is what's important because that's something that we can rely on. We cannot rely on Wi-Fi. I mean, obviously it's getting cut here and there and it's really easy to hack it, etc. Um, Saying that, using, if I go, I jump back to agriculture, but it's not really jumping back because it's all connected. Given all the antennas and all the Wi-Fi and bad, bad frequencies out there, if I put a atmospheric uh, um, electricity antenna or other devices that, to promote and to uh, help my uh, plants and my garden, won't they attract some bad frequencies from antennas? And if so, what then will happen? So I've had a lot of people who they have Wi-Fi in their house and they put the atmospheric antennas 
and their plants just go crazy. The one lady, her plants are taller than her ceiling. And now her apartment, she's like, I don't know what to do because they're bigger than what it's supposed to be. And my thought on this is that the Wi-Fi frequency frequencies are a secondary frequency, right? They're created. They're this yes. like secondary technology. Versus when you place these atmospheric antennas into your plants and into your soil, you're picking up on the Earth's frequency, which is larger, right? We're, we're it puts Wi-Fi puts us in a fear state, right? It's because it's it's it can it's all over and whatever else, but it puts us in a fear state. The Earth's frequency, in my opinion, is much larger and much bigger. So what you're doing is, is you're creating an antenna to pick up on that frequency, and your plants will then accelerate. And I've seen this. Multiple people have sent me multiple videos of their plants still going crazy, even with the Wi-Fi. And the lady was the lady was in Michigan, and she was kind of uh, blown away that her plants are thriving so much. She's like, I haven't turned off the Wi-Fi router. I, I I don't know how to disable it at, at this time, but my plants are still doing so well. So I think what happens is, is the combination of the copper and the wood, and it basically can act as a reflective property where it's reflecting things away, almost like blocking them. Because I've learned to start realizing, or I've learned to start thinking about things in a reflective way as well too, right? Rather than just enhancing, it also could be reflecting. Right. That's why they used to coat everything in copper and gold back in the day. But in my opinion, I've seen a lot of people's gardens go crazy, even with still using the atmospheric antennas. I don't think things are as dangerous as they seem. And that's just kind of me, because I think plants are much stronger than what we've been told. Right. Because if plants can come back to life just by using a little bit of copper and they are in a dormant state, then the real question is, is how strong and powerful are plants, right? Can trees come back to life? Can all these things, even with all this stuff being put out onto our terrain, mother nature always prevails, right? So I kind of see it that way. So I don't think in what I've seen with people, it is doing anything in a dangerous form. Now, there are some videos and articles coming out that saying, if you wear copper, you're going to connect up to the internet. I think they're putting these out because they are afraid that everybody is buying copper, right? They even had a copper shortage. There was a shortage of copper all of a sudden, <laughs> a couple months ago, right? It just so happens we've never seen a copper shortage, I think in like 40 years or 50 years, you know, since back in the day, but it's like, so then all of a sudden now there's a copper shortage. You know? So just so happens, right? So I, I kind of see it that way, but I've, I've started to realize that even when you look at like the animals and the bees and the pollinators, they all come about. Right. So if the frequencies were as yeah. toxic as we were told, they would not. But they start coming around. And that started making me realize, you know, we have no idea. And that's why I just, you know, I've, I've learned to just accept we have no idea how anything works. We don't have an idea how electricity works. We don't have an idea how Wi-Fi. We don't have an idea on anything. But I do know nature has an idea on how things work. And nature is stronger than everything in which we've been told. You know, there's almost every sentence you say, I have something to say too, but I, hey, I keep quiet because I want to I wanna hear. Um, there's a few things here. One thing is I say to the audience, Matt is no expert, neither am I. But we use our intuition and common sense and, you know, connecting subjects and working with our brain and heart to feel and to see and to understand what is right. We, we're not sure always. And, and, and I, I can give examples to it, but just to say it's about you guys out there. It's not about Chai or Matt. It's about you. It's about all of us, what we do with it. Okay? So you need to try it out. <laughs> Again, I'm just reminding you. Second thing, you gave an example of this woman and the plant in her flat and the Wi-Fi is on. Okay, let's say this is... Maybe it's not that. Maybe the sun was on the plant and the plant did really well. Let's let's put it aside. Let's talk one second about larger fields with larger antennas out there, okay? And if I put an antenna, atmospheric uh, antenna for my trees or for my plants, um, what happened to the frequencies in the air from from the mast from the 5G, 4G, whatever you must? I mean, what what happened there? Will the atmospheric antenna grab these frequencies and ground them 
to the soil, to the copper, or do you have any idea? And it's okay if you say, I, look, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just thinking it out loud. So with, with that topic, it's a, yeah, it's a, I can't fully answer it, but I can, I kind of think, okay, it's kind of like if I take a meter and I go out into nature and I start picking up frequencies that I don't know what they are, right? If the meter is not able to tell me what these frequencies are, then are these frequencies naturally occurring, right? And then the question is, is when we go to place these antennas, what naturally occurring frequencies am I picking up on? Now, if he does whatever the Musk thing, put things up in the air, do those things even work I at the way in which we've been told, right? Like I've started to realize I have to question everything of if I've told that this is coming down from the air and supposedly there's something up there and whatever else, how come number one, I don't see them? And number two, do they really work in the way we've been told, right? Mm -hmm. So I kind of start to think maybe the frequencies don't cover the spectrums, right? Because let's look at like, if we make it really simple, like the, the 5G spectrum, right? If they're trying to put it every 50 feet, does it not go farther than 50 feet? You know, so then if I place my antenna, I, it's probably not going to even pick up on it because it's not 50 feet from me or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, yeah, I kind of see it that way and kind of look at if I make a taller antenna, maybe I'm just going to gather the Earth's energy from farther away. And this was shown, and this is why I relate this, there was a Russian guy who took some mercury and attached it to an antenna, and he was picking up television stations from like 60 miles away just by using the mercury. So I kind of think if you do a larger copper antenna, you're kind of picking up on the Earth's frequencies from farther away rather than whatever is being put into our air. Because I I just, yeah, I kind of I kind of see everything they do as secondary now. You know, I don't see it as primary because if it was as toxic as we were told, like I'm just making a really bold statement, but as toxic to such an extreme, we would all be gone a long time ago, right? Like as soon as the cell phone first rolled out, then that would have just started kind of getting rid of us. But I don't think it's as toxic because our bodies and our plants and our animals are actually much stronger, but they use fear frequencies to say, you know, we got satellites and all this stuff, but maybe it's not, maybe it doesn't work that way. That's, I guess, my opinion on it. But on the other hand, uh, the book of Artu, what's the name of the book? The Rainbow. Invisible Rainbow, yeah. Invisible Rainbow, yes, thanks. Actually, there it says that every time they put out new level of technology, uh, a, a pandemic, uh, you know, broken, you know, something like that. So there is an effect, obviously, of electromagnetic and Personally, I looked at uh, numerous research, you know, studies about that from the Russians, from, from America, from China, from Israel. So there is an effect on plants and bees and humans. We know that. Even the NTP study showed that and uh, Ramazzini study in Italy showed that. So we know there is an effect, but I do take your side at the moment because I, I know that the Earth... Um, energy is stronger than everything that is man-made um, yes. unless unless what man make uh, what man is making is harnessing earth's energy so then it just boost it <laughs> and not going against it uh, by the way i got a book for my mother-in-law <laughs> a year ago roughly it's called the secret life of trees okay and there's a question there, and I would like to ask you this question, and just to, you know, the audience can think about it too. If you take a tree, a big tree, and you chop it, so you have this, uh, you know, this little chopped trunk, let's say that, that height, whatever, is it still a tree? I mean, it's it's the, it's the yeah, the stump and the roots, and it's, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of still see it as a tree. You know, it's still, it's still, it's still emanating, right? There's still sap and blood running through that tree and roots, yeah, yeah. and connections, yeah, and hidden connections underneath the soil, yeah. So I, I, I take your point on it. I mean, I, I also think it's a tree, and I'm saying this and I'm asking this because they've been chopping a lot of trees uh, recent years, and you know, almost on steroids in the last three years, and and it's really sad because they are like 
taking these out, chopping them and planting new trees as if it uh, can substitute them, yeah. But I'm just saying these old trees, we can help them because they are still trees. Although someone chopped them, we can still help them, probably, possibly by using some uh, magneto-electroculture devices. So I'm just throwing it in the air for people to try it out as well. <laughs> Interesting. Well, and also taking it back, if, if things are not really gone, right? Let's say they're in a hibernative state, right? That's something to really think about, right? Like a tree is sitting there dormant for, let's say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend up in California, right? They had pine trees, which they lost all the, all the leaves, all the pines, everything's all fallen off. And the tree is just not looking good. They wrapped the base of it with some copper. And that tree has now sprouted leaves for the first time in five or 10 years, whatever it was. So then the question is, is if you cut it like that, is it just sitting in a state in which it's pretty much just trying to come, you know, waiting to come back? Or can we just bring these things back? And then, like you said, we're going around cutting things down to replant them, right? Which makes absolutely no sense, especially if we're going to save the planet, right? We're going to save yeah, exactly. It. How does that make any sense? You know, so it's it, it, do, it doesn't. But yeah, I, I kind of look at it like everything is alive, right? Everything, even even just everything that we touch has life force energy and we just can't see it or pick it up. Hmm. But, you know, it's 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 when you start getting into this, like I have a picture of a bat. I had a bat sitting outside my house yesterday. I have a moth. I saw, I saw the picture of yeah. the bat, yes. I was going to say, the bat's out there. Now I have a moth today that's about this big, and it's a beautiful <laughs> moth. You know, so all these, these – I got bees on the – I can see them out the window. They're, they're all around. They pick up on this. And I think even with the trees, they're still emitting a frequency. And if a person is, for example, suffering from technology toxicity, they could sit on that stump that's now there, and they can help heal their body by helping to – um, ground themselves, and then they can also give their energy exchange, which I feel like we never talk about, also to the tree and exactly. to the plant, because exactly. that's also what we're creating. We're creating an energy exchange between us and the plants, right? We can't just plant plants and be like, oh, just do whatever. We have to give them our energy as they give our energy and, and their energy back to us. And I think that's something that we've lost too, right? When we lost track of the materials, we also lost track of the connection to our plants and how people used to speak and sing to their plants. They used to, you know, rub their leaves and, and, and be connected to them. They didn't just plant them and say whatever. So I feel like with the grand spectrum, what we're creating is a movement to help reconnect us to what we were originally connected to nature. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. You know, it's funny. I, I have another subject. We'll go to it in a minute. Uh, and this is chemtrails and stuff like that. But um, what you were saying is really profound. And I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, have you heard about the book Anastasia by Vladimir yes. Madre? Okay. Yes. Have you read it maybe? I haven't read it, but everybody tells me to look into it. Please, please do. Please do. Please read it. It's yeah. really worth it. All right. Even if you don't agree or accept everything, uh, really important. And what Anastasia is saying there is that, uh, just hear me out because it's specifically what you said. What Anastasia is saying there is that all nature is looking and expecting and waiting for our energy. Yes. Now, this is something we left behind. We forgot. We Someone made us forget. Whatever. And she says there, plants, trees, leaves, every leaf is different than the other. All of them looking at us, waiting for us to look at them. But we are stuck on our mobile phones, for example. All animals looking for our attention, waiting. The birds looking at us from the trees. The, the chicken, the cat, the dog. Now, we used to, the cat and the dogs, it's easy to see because they are more communicating with us. But birds are not going to communicating with us. Bees are not communicating with us. Or are they? <laughs> and Anastasia is saying that all of nature was made and created for us. Now, it goes hand in hand with the Bible, with the creation of in the Bible. We were 
we were created last and everything was created before us and man was created last. It doesn't matter now if you believe this story or not. It's a story and it's the best seller of, of, you know, of humanity still. Um, so when you look at this and you see what Anastasia is saying, there's something really unique here because our ability to influence reality is immense, is huge. But we don't think in that way. We don't see in that way. And we kind of neglected this attitude. And we need to, at least to my opinion, I think it's yours too. It's what you said. We need to bring it back. Now, there's another thing, another small thing I want to add about that. You know, I'm from time to time, I'm doing like biohacking workshops. And it's to do with magnetism and sunrise, sunset, uh, living water, cold water, etc. You know, Wim Hof uh, stuff and many other things. Anyway, one of the workshops, we were getting up and looking at the sunrise. And I was explaining <laughs> what the sun gives us. You know, people were watching, uh, like, I was behind the, the group and I was talking like really slowly because it's morning, you know, not to, um, you know, not to use so many words. And after we finished, one of the participants, she said, you know, Shai, you said what sun is giving us, but what about what we give it? And I was like, that's a really good point. <laughs> And again, it goes together with what I said before, with what Anastasia was saying. Nature needs us. But we neglected our shift. <laughs> we left it wide open and the baddies took over, you know. So we need to step back into our place and, and take what is ours. And nature is ours, not in a way to control it like they do, but to use the forces and to use nature uh, in harmony, like anarchy, you know, <laughs> like harmonious life with no government, with no control. And this is something that we need to maybe relearn how to do it. And uh, maybe it takes time, but we need to start as soon as we can. Any, you want to comment on that? I mean, I would say the best option for somebody to do that, just so they can kind of, feel what we're exactly explaining is that you should go spend take like a calendar and spend 30 days in nature and just go out in nature for at least an hour or two a day if you can and just do 30 days mark it off on your calendar 30 days don't bring any technology just find a spot that you enjoy wherever it may be if you want to sit by a stream that's cool too as well and just sit out there and just observe and be in the moment because when you start to be in the moment and you're connected with nature, everything else is forgotten. And your brain, like you just said, you start to activate certain parts of the brain in which are completely turned off while we use technology. Yeah. Technology is attempting to do everything for us so that we don't use our creative side. And as you start to analyze nature and start to see, you know, how did this do this or or how did this little mouse get food, right? Like you really start to think like they're out here trying to get like whatever seed and it's like you were just going to the grocery store, right? We're disconnected. But I would say for any person, just go out into nature for 30 days in a row, put your feet into the soil, you know, get connected, touch a tree, get connected. You will feel like a different person and you will also begin to see our reality as a different way, right? Because when you're constantly in it, like you said, if you're constantly into the screen and you're here all the time, you're never seeing what's going on around you. Yeah. And I see people even too, when they're walking their dog, they're looking at their phone. The dog is looking up at them like, you want to play? And the person is disconnected because of the fact that the technology is honing them in on a frequency level, alpha waves, right? Sleep state. So it's doing all of that to keep you captivated. But when we start looking at how beautiful Mother Nature is and all of its designs and all of these things, you start to really realize we do things the complete opposite. We build, yeah. like you said, in boxes and goofy materials and things that don't even make any sense while nature is so beautiful and harmonious. So I guess that would be my take on that. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, maybe one last thing just about um, chemtrails. I mean, all the sprays. Do these devices of uh, magneto electroculture do they help? I mean, I, I know all the Orgonites and Wilhelm Reich, and I've been there, done that. I mean, I've, I've done it like I don't know, 12, 14 years ago. 
and kind of left it. Do they work? Do, do we need to bother even with these devices uh, in order to put away the chemtrails? Will it help us? So I've seen, there was a guy, Jim Gale, he runs a food forestry uh, group and he uh, put out a video and a couple, quite other bunch of different people put out some videos showing that when they placed the antenna, they made a, a six foot antenna in their backyard. And I've had multiple people message me on Telegram about this too, that their skies are completely blue above their house. So I've came to the conclusion that we don't need the most fanciest things to actually resolve anything. It's actually very simple. And I think personally that during the times of the 1900s to the 1970s, they were removing all these antennas off of all the buildings, buildings. during that time so that they can manipulate the atmosphere a lot more. Versus when we start bringing these antennas back, what you're doing is you're sending that signal right up to you know, the sky. And Mother Earth is sending that signal up, too, as well. And like you said, too, they're cutting down the trees. Why are they doing that? Because they're also antennas sending signals up into the sky, right? Yeah. They're, trying to, they're trying to lower our frequency and our vibration as much as they can. But I personally, I personally think when people start putting all these antennas, they're going to see also beautiful skies as well because that stuff works on a frequency, too, right? They're trying to... With that stuff, what they're trying to do is they're trying to lower our frequency when they make it cloudy. There's more positive ions and all the stuff that make us tired and everything else. And then number two, they're trying to block up the root systems of the plants. But the electroculture starts to bring back the root system. So it's a counter towards all their stuff. Because like I've started to realize is everything is secondary. And I think everything can be fixed and there are solutions. And I think the fear, right? Because, like, let's say, let's just take it on another example. Let's say that stuff does nothing. Mm -hmm. It's the mind which mm -hmm. will create the, the problems in which we are having, right? And that's the other part that's working on our subconscious mind. And that's the, the part that they're always trying to manipulate and take advantage of. And when we start setting our mind, like, let's say every person set their mind to tomorrow will be sunny. I guarantee probably tomorrow will be sunny because the mind is, is creating on a large scale. And then when you're setting your intention or love to your plants and putting these things into the soil, now you're amplifying that area, right? Which then also amplifies above because it's as above, so below, right? The same exact thing. So that's kind of my take on it. You know, I'm uh, recently, uh, my wife and I purchased a um, small piece of land. It's a uh, olive grove, right? And it's a beautiful place in Israel. It's a, like an agriculture valley, but there's a lot of sprays going on. This is besides the chemtrails. I mean, I'm talking agriculture spraying. Yes. And also, obviously also uh, chemtrails. And uh, my intention is to start the um, um, electromagnetoculture research center. So it will deal also with chemtrails. I'm going to try this out with the atmospheric antennas. Uh, and I will check also if it affects not just the chemtrails, but also the agricultural sprays, because everything is electrical. So the chemicals in the sprays also have uh, some sort of electrical tendency. So I may be able to push <laughs> the tendency to come to my place. At least that, that's one of the things I'm going to try out, as well as, you know, vines and other plants with uh, magneto electroculture as well as obviously I want to bring some animals be beside the chicken I want to bring goat, sheep, donkey <laughs> I want to check stuff out I mean also I want to have animals but also I want to check stuff out um, and probably it will all happen hopefully in the next few months uh, because winter just finished, spring started we can do things um, in the soil so I'm just telling you this A, because I'm excited to do it and to uh, harness the, this knowledge of uh, electromagnetic culture in this piece of land and uh, whoever hear it and would like to help and support us and send us some funds that will be really good because I need it uh, and also I will keep you updated and I will send you some uh, content and some results uh, because I think it's something that when people see that it's possible not just for chemtrails or for agriculture sprays but other stuff as well uh, I would like to give it a you know a boost worldwide so uh, ov obviously and hopefully 
I will do my best to help others to spread the word, to see that this stuff works, you know, because I, I do believe it works. I see it works, but on a, on a small scale, not a large scale yet. I do know, again, that some others like Yannick Van Doon and some others are doing it on a larger scale and it, it works. So we can only uh, learn and keep their path and follow their footsteps because I think it's really, really important. Like you said, um, not just because of the food, but it's forces of creation that we need to use or, you know, use in harmony with our life. Um, obviously, there's many things we can talk of, <laughs> you know, like ancient history and stuff like that. Um, I think we should wrap it up. We can leave some stuff for uh, another time. Uh, but just before uh, we say goodbye, anything you would like to add or spe special message maybe to the world, to the people of the world who may hear or see you? I mean, I would just always say that there's solutions and the fear frequency is just the only frequency that they try to promote. And I realize that there's solutions to everything. And that's what we've dedicated our whole page on and dedicated all of our content on and everything is providing solutions, creating awareness. And because nobody should have to live in a state of fear, right? Like everything is running out. Everything is gone. Blah, 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 blah. I've started to realize that that's not true. If anything, we have more than we've actually ever had. And now because of this beautiful ability for technology, I can connect with you from here in Arizona. And that could never happen before. So we could never share and connect and provide information to one another and have a beautiful conversation because of this. So we should be using our technology to create solutions, to connect with one another, and really go back into, like I said, connecting to nature too. Because if everybody, like you just said, started experimenting, which is what's happening right now with social media, there's lots of farms doing it and it's, it's growing. But as it grows even more, you, what are you going to tell people they can't they can't do it people are already doing it they're already going to have abundance of food so once their food is taken care of then their water is taken care of the last one that people have to worry about is energy and that one's really easy right you can go into mercury and all the other things with that energy as well but once those two are taken care of people are very self-sufficient what do self-sufficient create a large resistance right because it's not i'm not dependent on your system anymore Excellent. so our whole thing that's what i'm about and, you know, I just like to tell people there are solutions and to resolve the fear and have an open mind. That's pretty much it. Like see things differently because everything we've been told, I've realized, is quite the opposite. <laughs> Literally the opposite. I mean, it's almost unbelievable. But once you get the idea of it, it's quite easy. It's yeah. literally the opposite from what we're being told. Matt Roski, thank you very much. Um, cultivate elevate.com that's your website obviously the link is in the description of this video uh, may god bless us all and help us thrive and do this agriculture or electroculture or magnetoculture and use the great forces we have in creation to win over these silly baddies and uh, really really do good in this world because we are here to do exactly that matt roski thank you very much Hope to see you soon in our next conversation. We will have a long one on the next one as well. <laughs> Excellent. God bless. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye.